Hi friends and welcome. Thanks for joining me. One of these times I'll get brave and go on live maybe. Going to paint an 8x10 today, which is the size that, <laughs> that I mostly do. It's a wonderful size, I think. I mean, it's a standard size to frame. You can find the frames any place. When you frame an 8x10, depending on the frame you use, you know, it can look uh, wonderful on the wall. Let me grab a frame and I'll show you. Just place one over it. You're probably really too close to see. But it can make a really nice statement on the wall. Doesn't look dinky. But I like to work wet into wet and I like to work quickly. And an 8x10, you know, I'm not working so big, so it works nice for that. Okay, I'm going to paint a nocturne today. I'm actually working from a couple different photos of the same house. This is one I took here in town, has the light. Uh, I like that the stop sign's glowing. This is a restaurant back here behind it. I'm not going to be painting that in. Look how the crosswalk even glows. Kind of a green light almost. So I'm going to work from that one. I'm not in love with the composition on that. I have a second one here, not as good a photo of the same place. So I'm going to kind of figure this out as I go. Um, I think the first thing we're going to do, a lot of times you know I put an orange wash on the canvas. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to um, put a burnt sienna wash on here. We're going we're gonna to just try something. I like trying new things. It makes it fun and exciting. And These are panels I buy from Dick Blick and uh, they do come with a coat of gesso, but they're very, very slick, so I put a couple coats on myself, put a little texture on them. I don't I rarely actually have burnt sienna on my palette, but I have a big tube of it, so I use it here and there for stuff when I just want to play around generally. I did want to talk today a little bit about um, becoming a better artist some things I've been thinking about. If your goal is to be a representational artist, I do have some suggestions that I think are important and are helpful. And um, if you're new to painting, these things would be very helpful to you. And even if you're not new to painting, I want to give you some things to think about. All right, let me, let me get this composition on here first before I get much further. I don't want the house extremely large. I, um, in the first photo, it filled up the bulk of the canvas. It's not really well what I want. So we're kind of designing this as we go, which I don't do that a lot. I tend to, a lot of times, uh, I like to have all the information, but we're going we're gonna to try some things. We're going to leave the foreground pretty dark. This is the street. Okay. And the house will be... I want to keep the house smaller again. Maybe from here to here. So rather than drawing it, we're kind of drawing it with a paintbrush. Wiping out. And I have started paintings this way where you're just thinking value. You can let them dry if that works better and come back and do glazing and The uh, roof is very dark. Darkest things are the silhouette of the trees and the roof. The sky is not quite as dark. I 
you know, a lot of houses you wouldn't take a second glance at during the day can look pretty cool at night. Because it's a, you know, it's the silhouette of the house, basically the shape of the house that catches your eye at night. And there's even, which is one of the things I love about old houses, there's even a, a little extra piece here on the side that at some point they added on. I've said that before, but that's one thing I love about old houses and barns and, you know, they just stuck pieces on as they needed more space. You can even see the crosswalk, which is pretty cool, in the one photo, and uh, in the one photo, the, the stop sign shows up nice and bright, and then we have a pole light here, which we're going to run up and off. We'll darken this up a little bit, and... Uh, and I didn't have to start this way. I could have just dove right in, you know. I added some ultramarine to this mixture. And again, the roof is the second darkest thing. So I'm, you know, I'm changing the composition around to suit me. And one of the most important parts of this is where the light is. We'll light that out. I wet the paper towel down, so. And I'm standing today, even though I frequently sit, because I want to get back from it, because I, uh, you know, I'd like not to be too picky with it. All right. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to start out and um, mix up a purple for the sky. Of ultramarine and crimson. The sky is more blue, I can see, than it is crimson. And it, uh, even though it's dark, you know, I want it to feel like a nighttime sky, so I've got to keep it dark enough that it does. But we'll adjust things around if it doesn't feel right. Of course we will. Kind of following the lead of a, a guy named Carl Bretzky, who has a, a, a DVD called Nocturne, and I watched a, a demo, partial demo he did um, on Facebook, and I got a lot of good information from it, and that was what kind of got me into doing Nocturnes lately. So some of these things are how he instructs to uh, handle the light source and stuff.
I'll explain that to you when we get there. Anyway, I'm trying to talk here while I, I was talking, going to talk about uh, becoming a better artist, especially if you're interested in representational art. Um, I've known lots of artists over the years, good and bad, and I've known artists actually, some of them that have painted a long, long time that uh, don't seem to grow. They, I don't think they started off on the right foot, and uh, they don't necessarily see their own work. I always say it's a gift to be able to see your own work. And um, my belief, and I think most artists would agree with me, that know their stuff, that um, you've got to learn certain things to be a good artist. You need to know a lot of basic things. And I really strongly feel you should start off painting still lifes. You should paint still lifes for a long time. I still paint them, still love them. I do know artists that are, are pretty good artists and they're kind of like, I don't want to paint another still life, because they did. They put their time in and they kind of got tired of it. I enjoy a still life. And let me tell you why I think you should paint still lifes. I think every good lesson you can get as an artist comes from painting a still life. I could say working from life, which is great too, but you know, you have a lot of different challenges if you go plein air paint that you don't have with a still life. With a still life, you're setting it up, you're creating your composition. So composition, you're learning composition. You're learning value, lights and darks. You're learning edges, soft and hard edges. You're learning how to color mix. I mean, every good lesson is there with a still life. So if you haven't been painting long or you're just starting, I would just paint the heck out of still lifes and keep them simple if you want and paint a lot of them, paint them quickly, just keep painting them. If you have been painting quite a while and maybe you're not where you wanna be, um, consider going back to the basics and painting a lot of still lifes. A lot of people wanna jump ahead and they wanna sell but you can't paint with that in mind. You have to paint for the love of it. And uh, that was never my intention with learning to paint was to sell. It was to learn to paint and it's still, even though I've got a website and it's wonderful to sell, I most of all want to be good at it. That's my biggest goal is to be a good artist be respected and be known as a good artist. That's my biggest goal. Um, so consider if you're not where you should be or where you want to be, stepping back and painting a whole lot of still life. Start over. Learn those basic tools. Um, there's a very good artist on uh, YouTube that I watch, Dan Nelson, and he, he's a, he makes his living as an artist. He talks a lot about early journey painters, which are beginner painters, in the early part of their career, what they should be doing. He says they should be painting stuff. They should, they should be painting stuff. I would agree with that. They should be learning how to paint objects well. If you can't set up a fairly simple still life and replicate that pretty well, that you're not where you should be and you need to, you need to keep working on that. Um, he says in the first part of your career he thinks you paint stuff, in the second part you paint paint. And by that I think he means it's about paint application then. Um, for me, you know, once I learn the basic things, then you're thinking a lot more about design and those kind of things. We'll be going over all this again. Um, but don't get ahead of yourself and don't be in a hurry to, to sell because if you get that stuff out there too quick, you will regret it. You know, enjoy the process and uh, you know, like it or not, we, we, you got to learn those things. So whatever you decide to do, you'll be a better artist. And I 
this peak in the front comes up higher than the sides. Nocturnes are so fun because they're dramatic. I mean, it's all about lights and darks, dramatic, you know, extreme values, and uh, it's like, you know, you can do a still life. It's very dramatic. Dark background, dark objects, and hit it with bright light, and that's exciting, I think. To me, it is. So this is exciting, I think. See, and we kind of have a lost edge there, which you do at night. You don't always see all those edges. And I know that I've centered the house pretty much, but I think I'm okay with that because we've got a lot of stuff going on here. We have light, and then this hopefully will then draw your eye up into this area, which is more where our focal point should be. So got some dark shrubs in front. So consider what I said. I mean, um, maybe you need to back up for a while. If, if you haven't learned those things and you bypass those things, you will never you will never get past it. You will never be where you should be and you will struggle and uh, Painting's hard. Painting's hard no matter what. It is hard. I have painted hundreds and hundreds of still lives, and every painting is such a challenge. I love it, and I think that's part of what keeps me coming back to it. It is never easy. And then on the little tiny shrub over there. There's something light over here, too. I think it might be a piece of fence. So we may wipe that out. But I mean, you know, I don't know what your goals are. If your goals are that it's a hobby and you just want to have fun with it, do what's fun. But if your goals are to, you know, sell at t some point or, uh, again, be a really good representational artist, you got to do some stuff to have that happen, you know. Again, I'm standing today on purpose. I want to get back from the painting a lot. See, and we put this warm under here today, and I, I see it there in the sky, and uh, I kind of like it. I do like it. All right, let's do some... This might be a, a fence over here. The top of the house is green. And of course we've got windows, we've got play in there. So anyway, I hope all that made sense. I mean I just think this is, uh, and I've talked to people that are starting out, and I tell them to buy a whole bunch of inexpensive panels and set up simple still lifes and just paint the heck out of them. Paint one, then move on and paint another. 
you know, don't fret over them and spend a lot of time. Just do one and say next and move on. And you'll see, save them. You'll see your work grow and, uh, you know, find someone whose work you admire and have them critique you. A lot of people paint, lots and lots and lots of artists out there, but uh, of course they aren't all good and they aren't necessarily people you would want critiquing your work. So be picky and uh, take it with a grain of salt. I mean, everybody's got an opinion. It doesn't make it right. It's your painting in the end. So even with their suggestions, you may not, you may not want to do it. So Thank you to my new subscribers for joining me. Um, a lot of videos on here, all different subjects, because I like to do everything. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. When I hit uh, 500 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a painting. I've already given away one earlier, so we'll be doing that again. So the quicker we get up there, the quicker I'll be giving one away. mix up a green for the top part of that house. It's another really hot day in here in Ohio. My gosh. It's suffocating this weather lately. My I waited till about 9 o'clock to walk last night, and still it was almost unbearable. And there's a lot of white trim on this house that will help really explain things. But uh, if you're interested in nocturnes, I would try to get out and get nighttime photos. You can try to convert photos that aren't nocturnes, but I tell you, it's more difficult. I've done two of them here online lately, and the first one, I took the photos, it was kind of uh, dusk, wasn't quite dark, and I tried to, you know, convert it and uh, didn't work as well. The second one I did, that photo I shot at night, and uh, so everything in the photo was correct, and I think it came out pretty nice. Kind of blocking some windows here, and directly below those. We've got two down here. We have one way over here on this part. We have one on the side here that's catching maybe the light's on in there. I can't really tell. It's that or it's catching some reflected light.
so we'll make it lighter. It looks kind of warm. And I'm going to work, well, I don't know how picky I want to get with this. That's why I'm standing and I want to stay back and uh, use this big, bigger brush as much as I can. Even at night with the light on the house, I mean, things are going to be softer. shadows running across the top from there's a telephone pole here that's what this lights or pole where this lights coming from and then wires which I like I don't know about the shadows running across the front if that would make sense or not whether we'll do that I haven't made that decision yet let's paint this and I'll show you how he did it and uh, steps that he uses to block that in. First thing he lays in is yellow. And they don't have to be concentric circles. We're going to be blending it anyway. Then orange. Then we go to crimson. You know, I think a lot of people just, uh, they don't do this whole multicolored circle around their light source. They just paint it in. So I thought that it was, you know, it's kind of interesting the way he does it. Okay, so we got those three colors. And then we're going to go back into our sky color and kind of blend over it. Softly, kind of like that. And then, which seems odd, um, but I've said this before, he, he paints at night all the time. He paints outside at night a lot. So I'm sure he is very observant. And he, around that then, puts some green in. Again, if he wasn't seeing it, he probably wouldn't put it in. Seems strange, doesn't it? Okay, and the last thing he does is he takes white and yellow and very heavy. He lays that on. Does that look like the light just lit up? I hope so. So we'll leave that there for now. You know, I'm going to look in the demo that I watched him do see if I can find it without too much trouble. I had that on here at one point. Let me see if I've still got that, the painting that he did on the, on the demo. Uh, it might not be so easy. I have thousands of photos on here. I actually thought it was grouped in with this batch of photos and we could find it easy. Wait a minute, maybe. Hmm. Whoop, wait. Here it is. Got it. Okay, this is Carl Bresky's painting. 
This is a painting that he did in the Nocturne video, the part that I watched. He was working on this. So kind of a similar kind of, let me get rid of the, so you can see the whole thing. There. See, dark sky, silhouette of trees. Interesting, huh? That's his painting, not mine. All right, we're going to go back to our photo. Of our little house. Again, this has a lot of white trim and stuff, and um, I could do that with a palette knife. I'm not sure. I think we'll um, just keep blocking things in and moving forward. You know where this lights there's a pole I believe you know this foliage up in here would be catching some light so we're going to brighten it up a little bit The front of that house is catching light. Probably the top of these shrubs would be catching a little bit too. You gotta be careful because you want it to feel like nighttime, you know. And I think that does so far. Alright, let's get moving down with our greens. There's a little bit of lawn here. And it would be, you know, a little lighter than the shrubs. One thing he does too is say, where your brightest light is, it's warmer, and as it recedes away, it's going to go more red and then more blue. So, say you had a pole light here and it was hitting the sidewalk here, it'd be warmest where the light's hitting, then get more red, then more blue as it moves away. If you can't see it, don't explain it. I mean, our street's about to there, it looks like. Our telephone pole needs is coming about, uh, it's right here actually. Okay, nope, that's going to be wrong because it's got to come up because I've moved things around. We kind of created our composition, so that's wrong. It's got to come to there, to that, uh, to the light, so, because there's a, um, off of this light, there's like a, whatever, I don't know what to call that. So our uh, telephone pole would be right about here. 
and he's going to come on the other side of the street, so it'll come to about there. Okay. the thing with uh, being out at night trying to tell exactly what you're seeing I'm looking at this photo it could be that there's a telephone pole and a light post behind it but it really doesn't matter I don't think it's something to hold up our light and that's what's important We'll go ahead and keep working our way down. All right, we wipe this out because that's where our crosswalk is, and the the lines on the crosswalk are actually very light, light out into there, and then there's uh, two stripes coming that way. I want to keep this dark enough to where our um, lines will show up. Paint, painting's fun, like I said, but it's also hard, and you just your brain's just going, going, going while you're painting. So much to think about. be zooming in and looking for detail but you know I don't know how much detail I want to see Again, this area where the crosswalk is, it was pretty green. our crosswalk. It comes up to our sidewalk. Let me think if I got this right. We got a stop sign here so our corner would come down to about there. But 
this is all road over here. If you don't know, these are water mixable oils. So um, I don't use a medium, so my solvent is water. That's how I clean up. Less toxic. But like even traditional oil paints, you know, you got to be careful dipping into your solvent. It eats into your paint. So I'm being careful with the water at this stage. Early on, I don't care. I, I dip my brush in water. And decided to keep it darker down in the foreground. walk here but of course it's still not going to be as bright over that way kind of like this green light down here it's unusual And this is probably going to have to be darker unless we want more detail in it. I have decided. All right, let's think about the trim on the house. Again, we could do a palette knife. We can try that and see how it goes. Missed that completely, didn't I?
one thing I can see that I like in the photo is uh, the chimney. It might be too bright, we'll see. Get that a little darker. There's a shadow area under there. Grab a different brush. Tiny brush. And just some of this little tiny detail. I think it's important, so. Under here is a shadow. This palette knife catches terrible light for me. The ceiling light reflects off of it and I can barely see. And then there's a um, porch post here. It's one of those kind of filigree, you know, you've seen them probably. Want to make sure you see that porch. Let's look at some of this now. Okay, 
one of the things I did like about this is there's a stop sign in front of this house. Fairly big. comes down to there and then there's a street sign here you know you start off thinking you want this stuff in we'll see and that one looks like it comes here too now are we gonna like that those two signs sticking up in front of the house I think I like the stop sign, you know, I don't think I care for the other. It's not there yet, but, uh... Let's put the one in and we'll see what we think. I got blue paint all over me. How long have we been going? 52 minutes. The stop sign is actually um, catching some light. So it's glowing pretty good. One thing about doing the stop sign is it tells you that you're at the corner. Now when you paint a la prima and you paint wet into wet like I've, I've done here, one advantage is that you can scratch back to the white. So if we can do a steady hand and do that. So another thing under the sign, what is that? Oh, it says all way. I don't know. And the post to the sign is fairly dark. I painted it smaller than it is in the picture because it seems so large but I'm not sure now how I feel about that I may want to do it bigger I mean it's closer to you and uh, I'll show you how large it is in the actual photo so it's pretty big it covers um, it actually covers not a lot bigger but it's a little bigger than I have it So let's expand it out. It means doing away with our lettering, but uh, that feels better. We'll go back to our little stylus again. Had this thing for years and years and years. And I 
don't have a street sign in yet. I'm going to think about that. So if you're new to painting, and uh, I can help you in any way, I mean, feel free to put your questions below, and uh, or if you have any questions about the paint that I use, these are Cobra. I order them through Dick Blick. They're a very nice quality water mixable oil. I think you want to use good quality ones. I've had people complain to me about them being sticky, and that is not my experience. I think, you know, you use cheaper, uh, cheaper brands, I think you run into that. Okay, let's think about some power lines. They look pretty dark in the picture. The last painting I did, the last nocturne, I, um, the picture that I had, the lines kind of glowed, which I did like that, so we may do that. All right, let's see here what we got. As you can see, I'm scratching. I'm getting some paint, but I'm also scratching through the surface, so We'll go back and figure that out. So close to the light here. Make those glow a little bit.
actually. Um, trying to think. This would be a road going over into here, wouldn't it? Again, not that it really matters. And I think I want it dark up here, away from the light. a little bit, but I don't want to stop it right at the corner of the house. You don't want uh, those two edges that want to run it past. So it creates what they call a tangent. You know, we could put some tree trunks over into here. You know, would you see them? It's really dark. Put a few more yellows into here. You know, because that's lights here and it might be. to think about this area, whether I, um, I definitely could suggest some tree trunks. That window over there, like I say, glows. I don't know if that works or not, but. suggested some trees. All right, we're going to quit for now. I work pretty quick, so is it done? I don't know for sure. I want to look at it. One thing we didn't do is, uh, which it might not really make any difference because it's white around it anyway, is we could scratch. The stop sign is white around the edge. So we'll kind of scratch it out. All right, I will show you what I've done. We've been at this an hour. in a little bit. 
see there's a stop sign, kind of impressionistic. I'll probably work on it some more. Like I said, I did put the burnt sienna, burnt sienna on first, and I do kind of like the warmth that I see. So uh, we'll be doing some more things to it. Um, I think it might be nice to have a window here, even though there isn't one. And let me show you my reference again. See, there's a street sign there, too, that I didn't put in. I decided maybe it was too much. All right, I'm going to look at it some more, go to the looking at it stage and decide if I want to make some changes. And please consider liking and subscribing if you would, and leave me a comment. I always enjoy your comments. And uh, if you hit the bell below, they'll notify you when I upload a new video again. I hope you enjoyed watching. You have a great day. Bye-bye.